Alright, how's everybody doing today? Alrighty, so let's talk about the Quick Trip 500 at Atlanta last night. Uh, I just want to start out by saying that um, pretty boring race to watch, honestly. I mean, it was a good race, don't get me wrong. You know, it had a little bit of excitement, um, you know, at some points, but mostly the whole race was pretty much just clean racing like you know I mean I get that the cars are you know expensive to make you know and it you know if you get into somebody you know and damage a car that could be devastating to a low budget team but you know there needs to be some kind of wreck or something you know to keep people entertained and that's why you know, a lot of people say that the NASCAR sport has gone downhill in recent years is because of, you know, this the lack of excitement that there used to be. There isn't that many rivals like there used to be back in the, you know, the late 90s, early 2000s. You know, it's just become such a, you know, don't touch my car, you know, or, you know, you're not going to cost my team money. You know, they're, that's why... A lot of people like to watch Daytona and Talladega because there's always massive wrecks. You know, and that's what people want to see. Now, you know, I don't I don't expect to see a you know, a twenty car pile up on every single racetrack. No, I don't expect to see that. But you know, I would like to see, you know, some kind of accident where at least two people get involved, you know, and they get taken out. You know, I mean, that's what the sport used to be, and that's why it needs to be now. Like, we don't need to be going out there, just going round and round. I mean, I know that's the point of NASCAR, and I love NASCAR, but, you know, it's, it's lost its excitement. Now, on one good note, it is nice to see that, you know, Fox Sports, you know, who airs it, you know they got they got great uh, c people in the booth with uh, Jeff Gordon and Mike Joy and then Larry McReynolds all up and they're giving you some breakdowns of what all is going on. You know because I never used to really be there. I mean it did, but it wasn't as in depth as it is, and it really helps you helps people understand what's really going on during the race instead of just watching. That is one good news. You know, but. There's just so many things that need to come together to get that good race. And I'm sorry, but uh, last uh, last night's race was pretty little, kind of a little disappointing for me because I watched it at work, you know, and I'm sitting there. And I was just like, you know, come on, let's go, you know, let's get some action up in here. But um, last night's race was pretty much a testament that. To say that all those drivers, all 40 of them, can race cleanly when they want to. Which makes me also kind of believe this is just a theory, a conspiracy theory. You know? Now keep in mind, I used to think this for the longest time and thought it was true. And then I kind of, you know, pushed it out the window. But uh, my theory was, as you know, growing up as a kid, that there was... You know, someone in NASCAR, you know, one of the officials that sits up in the booth, you know, in their little NASCAR little office that controls the race. I thought that one of them would come over the radio to some random driver. Because, you know, you'd look back on some of these accidents throughout over the years and cautions and you're like, well, how did that happen? You know, did that really just happen? Um, it's almost as if the dude up in the booth was like, hey, wreck that guy right now. You know, we, we need some fans. You know, hurry up and wreck him so we can get some excitement going in the race because, you know, we're losing, we're losing viewers. Um, I, <laughs> that's what I used to think. I mean, I hope it's still, you know, maybe, maybe they do do that. Who knows? You know, that's why it's called a theory. But, um, anyway, that's what I used to think as a kid. 
Now, I mean, it would be awesome if they still, if they did something like that, but uh, they will never tell. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, you know, it was a good race. You had Kevin Harvick won, of course. You know, he he led some laps there at the beginning, and then I. I don't know what happened. He just fell back. He had some he had some issues. Said his car wasn't driving good, and then all of a sudden, there he is at the end. You know, Clint Boyer had issues with tire wear, and I seen the you know the tire on that when they stopped at the pit and pulled it off. Freaking thing had a big huge divot right in the middle of the tire. But um, you know, Chase Elliott started at first. And he held first until they made that first pit stop, and he just didn't have the car. You know, kind of felt a little disappointed about that, but, you know, the whole Hendrick Motorsports team, the only person that actually didn't have any issues on the Hendrick Motorsports was uh, Alex Bowman and Jimmy Johnson. Who I think, I'm pretty sure Jimmy finished sixth, but, um, you know, congratulations to Harvick. You know, he got his 50, 51st victory. He's, um... I believe it's top six or top seven all-time wins in NASCAR. Um, not too sure. I'll have to look that back up and uh, get back with you the next time he wins because the next time he wins, it'll be out 52. But, um, you know, I'm still hunting for that elusive, you know, Jimmy Johnson win. You know, I know a lot of people say he's washed up, you know. He's done. He's not going to be doing any more, getting any more wins, you know, because it's his last year. And ever since that wreck he had in Pocono at, in 2017, he said he, in his own interview, he said that he's changed the way he raced when he hit that wall that day because he said that he almost, you know, didn't make it. And I saw that incident, and it was, it was pretty, pretty intense. But, um... You know, I've also seen some other pretty intense, you know, accidents and, you know, those drivers usually take it easy for a race or two and then they get right back into it. Um, another thing that Jimmy Johnson really isn't too much worried about is that, you know, I mean, he's a seven-time champion. He's won his races. He, you know, maybe the only reason he was still racing was because he had a contract you know, and he couldn't, you know, back out of his contract, you know, because that would look bad. But, um, I mean, he's a seven-time champion. Won 83 races, you know. I mean, to me, he's still a legend. Granted, he's not getting the wins he was getting, but, you know, if, he, if he's running in the top five, top ten, you know, that's good enough for me. At least, you know, he's going to be there at the end. Hopefully he's going to be in the playoffs this year and not get eliminated. That would be awesome. But, uh, you know, the whole race was, I mean, it was interesting to watch. You had that pass that Martin Truex Jr. made on Kevin Harvick, I believe it was, in Stage 1 or Stage 2. Like, Harvick's just, you know, Right in the middle, goes into the turn, and here comes Truex right on the inside, and just gone. Like, that was an amazing pass. That was, like, the most exciting thing that, like, stuck in my mind for the whole race. And, you know, I honestly was kind of rooting for Truex to win, you know, because he looked like he had the car, because Harvick had fell back, and um, he had Truex got his first stage win of the year. But, you know, it's, it's hard to... I don't know, I don't know how to say it, but, uh, you need to have accidents. You need to have some type of drama in the sport for fans like me and you to be able to sit there and watch the whole thing from start to finish. And I guarantee you, if you're watching this video, you watched the race, you watched some of it, but I guarantee you didn't sit there and watch the whole thing. 
you know, you got up, made a sandwich during the commercial break, missed a couple laps after the commercial break because you were still making that sandwich, or, you know, getting a new beer. But, um, it, it's... I really want the sport to go back to what it was. We have the drivers. We have the talent of all these young drivers to, to, to go out and do that. But I feel the reason that the sport has gone downhill is not only because of the lack of drama and excitement. It's because you got these young drivers. They're sitting in these cars that are pretty much money and you know they don't want to take push their car to the edge because they know that if they destroy that car you know that 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 puts a big dent in the team's pocket so you know why are, why are they gonna go out there and run their car as hard as they can every damn lap so that way, you know, just to, just to, sorry, <laughs> forgot what I was going to say there, but anyway, um, you know what, they're, they won't push their car because they know if they get it damaged, you know, it's in a, they're out of money, pretty much. So why would you, you know, go out there and do that? There needs to be, it needs to get cheaper, so that way we can have those things that the fans really want. The stage racing, I disagree with everyone that says that the stage racing was a bad idea. Yeah, it you know, breaks the tradition of NASCAR. But here's the thing. The purpose of the stage racing was for the fans. to not So they wouldn't have to sit there from start to finish. You know, if you had to go to work at a certain time, or if you had some event planned that you needed... You know, or someplace you needed to be, you could sit there and watch stage one and stage stage one from start to finish, and you would have a little mini race in the main race. So it, pretty much you get three separate races in one race. You know, and that's why sometimes you see drivers fight so hard for the stage so they can get the stage points. Now, I'm pretty sure the stage points were implemented so that way you could, you know, the, a little ascent, incentive to make the drivers run better towards the end of that stage so that way there's a bonus for placing in the top 10. You know, I mean, NASCAR has all these things that they want to do, and if you, know, if you break down what it is they're doing, you can actually understand that NASCAR aren't, aren't making these rules to be fairer or to dull the sport down. They're trying to help the fans out for people who live busy lives that can't sit there and watch a three-hour race at one time. You know? And so, I mean, all you had to do, say if I had to go to work and I couldn't see the end of the race, I'd watch stage one to the finish and I would give you a general idea of who's going to be in the top at the end if there's no big incident. And then, you know, later on, jump on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whichever one you want to jump on to find out who actually won the race. You know, I mean, because technically you still got to see some race action. Now, granted, stage three is usually the best because that's when everybody starts pushing hard. But, uh, these are my thoughts on the situation. Uh, another thing is, too, I think we should have to chop off about 50, 60 laps off of each race. Now, I love NASCAR just as much as the next dude, but, I mean, watching it year-end, year after year, race after race, weekend after weekend, sometimes it gets a little boring. And, you know, I hope NASCAR, you know, figures out another way to make this stuff more interesting. Now, the most that I have ever loved NASCAR was after the COVID-19 pandemic when they came back. You had a race on Sunday. Then you had a race on Wednesday. Then Sunday. Then Wednesday. 
And then you also had the rain delays that was throwing in a big curveball. So everything was all over the place. You didn't know what was going to happen. No practice, no qualifying. You got all this awesome, you know, excitement surrounding it. You know, and I was, I think that's why I was kind of disappointed with Sunday's race is because you, you had a race last Sunday at Bristol. Now, I jumped on freaking the TV on Wednesday for some odd reason, thinking <laughs> thinking that there was going to be a race on Wednesday, but there wasn't. I had to wait a whole other three days to watch Atlanta. And I was like, oh, well, sweet, they're still not, you know, practicing or qualifying. They're going off of points to determine who can go first. But I liked how I did that with Darlington and Charlotte, how I did one race off of points, and then whoever started in the first the 20th had on the second race had to start 20th to 40th they inverted the field that gave it a little bit more excitement it got the people in the back a chance to run up front you know to see if their cars can actually hang with the big dogs and that was the exciting part about it and i really really hope that they can continue that more next year or add more stuff into the schedule because that is just a great way to keep people guessing, keep the keep the fans on edge of who's you know who's going to dominate, you know who's going to lose, who's going to do terrible. But anyway, I hope you liked this video, and uh, it would be greatly appreciated if you you know hit that subscribe button. You know, I mean, I'm still working on these videos. I'm trying to get them better for you. As you can see, I've got more excitement with it. I'm trying to do my best to give you my thoughts on NASCAR and what they need to do to get this sport back to what it was. But please, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, let me know if you like the video, dislike it, what I can do to make it better, what you want to hear, what you want to see. I'm still trying to work on putting up a, you know, like a video up here. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out the camera, but yeah, like a little video up here where you can watch what I'm talking about. Now, I haven't figured that out yet, but we'll get there, okay? <laughs> Just bear with me. If anyone has any advice on how I can do that, let me know, and I'll figure that out and work on it. But until then, I will catch you later this week, most likely Wednesday, and I will give you my predictions on the Finish Line app. On who's going to be winning the race. Because this past week, I picked all Hendrick Motorsports. And let me tell you, I didn't do too hot. But anyway, I'll catch you guys next time. Have a good one. Later.